Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show. Thanks for joining us to lead, learn, and laugh. Learn market knowledge and best practices to lead your company success. And laugh, I believe we have to have some fun along the way, right? Well, hello, I'm Michael Bull, your host to the world of commercial real estate. If you have any questions or comments related to today's show or about any commercial real estate related endeavors, you're invited to contact us, like, tweet, circle, email, however you want to reach us. All our contact information is available at commercialrealestateshow.com. Where today our show is called Tax Credits. We're going to give you some cash. <laughs> We're going to talk about tax credits and other tax incentives. And, you know, tax credits are like cash. I mean, they're a they're a dollar for dollar credit against tax liability. And tax credits are, are one of the strongest tools at the disposal of federal and state governments to uh, promote economic development. And, you know, that's so important to attract and retrain business to our areas. But they're not advertised. So we're going to share some of the tax credits and other tax incentives you may be able to use in your business and in your commercial real estate related endeavors. Let's meet our show guests. First, please welcome Ricky Novak. He is managing partner of Strategic Group of Companies. They focus on investment banking services, often focusing on tax strategies that are green, sustainable, and socially responsible. And that's very nice of you, Ricky. Well, I try. (laughs) Thank you, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Michael. Also, please welcome David McMillan, President McMillan and Associates. McMillan and Associates specializes in state and federal tax credits for companies across the U.S. Since 72, they've been working with tax credits, grants, and business incentives for various industries. David, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Michael. Well, I appreciate you guys being with us today. I mean, it's, it's, it's a special time we're getting close to the end of the year right (laughs) people start thinking about taxes for for their business and their real estate endeavors and and why is it a little more important now uh, ricky than it has been in the past well as many people know there's been a significant change in in the tax world that we live in uh we had an increase in tax rates this uh this past january uh so not only at the uh at the individual tax bracket level uh the rates went up with the highest bracket now being 39.6 percent so we've had a significant increase in the individual tax rate we've also had an increase in capital gains taxes uh so as you know uh, in the highest tax bracket we've gone from a 15 percent uh, effective tax rate to a 20 percent rate for long-term capital gains. In addition to those two changes, we also now have what has been affectionately referred to as the Obamacare tax, and that's been the uh, tax on investment income, which is an additional 3.8%. So when you start looking at all of these increases in the tax rate, uh, your taxpayer, whether it's someone that that owns real estate and simply receives income from it, or it's a a taxpayer looking to sell an asset, uh, there's been a significant increase in tax liability. Uh, Hence, we've seen over the course of this year a dramatic increase in the number of 1031 exchanges people have been performing because they're trying to avoid this increased tax liability. And we've also seen a dramatic increase in an interest level from real estate owners, operators, and developers uh, when it comes to understanding federal and state-based tax incentives such as tax credits. Okay. And David, it's important for businesses as well. Isn't oh, it? absolutely. It's a pain point. I just paid my tax bill. I was mad. My <laughs> wife realized, wow, that's a lot of money we just dropped. So it's, it's a big pain point for companies, but they also don't know what's out there. Tax credits are really a gold mine for businesses, but they're just not told about them. But we hear about them every day. That's the, if you're here in Atlanta, you see movies being filmed here on the street all the time tax credits. You know, if you're in Athens, we just started, Georgia just had their first game, although it was a loss. Um, Caterpillar is spending a billion dollars to build a plant in Athens just because of tax credits there. So it's a big pain point for businesses, but people also see tax credits in the market and they're wondering, how do I get that money? Right. And we're filming here in Atlanta in Studio One. And uh, and of course, we're all over the country. And and, and there's tax credits available in the film industry in the state of Georgia, some other states. Tell us about tax credits related to the film industry. Ricky, well, I know that's what you do, so. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, there's been a, a tremendous push uh, within Hollywood, uh, certainly to, to build relationships uh, with various 
jurisdictions that are willing to give tax incentives to, to gain that business. And so what you'll find is, is Hollywood goes anywhere where people will offer them money. Uh, and so, uh, and, and, and I think and everybody that, does that too. Right? <laughs> <That's a very laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what will happen is you know, they're not married to filming in any, any one area. And so as long as, um, you know, if you have a choice between filming in, you know, say Kentucky or North Carolina or Georgia, you know, if the topography is fairly similar for what you're trying to capture, you're going to go somewhere where they're going to give you the best incentive. And, and uh, we're fortunate, uh, as you mentioned, being here in, in, in Atlanta today uh, for this conversation, that you know, Georgia has been a great uh, magnet for that. Uh, so in certain jurisdictions, uh, you know, Georgia, North Carolina, Louisiana, Michigan, there have been some tremendous programs put in place where a certain percentage of what gets spent in that state by the studio will give rise to a tax credit. Um, so you may have Warner Brothers that will come and, and film Fast and Furious 7 here in Atlanta, and they get a 30% tax credit for doing it. Uh, the interesting thing is Warner Brothers has no income tax liability in Georgia. They maybe owe the state $4,000. So they get this $4 million tax credit. They have no use for it. So the state of Georgia will allow those credits to be sold. So you not only have the economic incentive of bringing all of those dollars to the state, but now you have a credit that ultimately can get sold back to business owners um, or to individual taxpayers, including people that own real estate uh, here in the state of Georgia to offset their Georgia income tax liability. Georgia is one example of many states. Um, again, probably Louisiana is the other state that's most widely recognized for these types of credits. How about federal taxes? You know, there, there are some opportunities at the federal level to piggyback off of some programs to receive federal benefits, but it's been the state credits that really have gotten uh, the most attention because, again, as you mentioned, a credit is a dollar-for-dollar -dollar benefit, uh, which makes it more attractive than a deduction. I mean, for those out there uh, who, who hate tax, and, and that probably represents 99.999% <laughs> of the people that are listening, you know, the difference between a tax credit and a deduction, a credit is a dollar-for-dollar -dollar benefit, so you receive a one dollar credit that can be used to offset one dollar of income directly the deduction programs are a little different you receive a deduction a one dollar deduction well that is worth to you whatever your effective tax rate is so if you pay a 40 percent effective tax rate that one dollar of deduction is worth about 40 cents to you because you would be paying 40 cents of tax on that same dollar of income and what's great for business owners is that most of these credits actually flow through to the owners of the company. So if you're an S Corp, LLC, you actually get to take these tax credits personally. So for folks that we've worked with and business owners, I'm not just saving their company money, I'm actually putting money into their personal pocket. Okay. Which is great. And let's talk about potential savings. So let's say I had a company with a, a million dollar tax liability. How might I use tax buying tax credits? How might I use that? And what might my savings be? Well, you can go at this a couple different ways. Depending on the type of company, you can either purchase tax credits, which is what Ricky does. Um, there are a couple different options. Or depending on your industry, you can actually get tax credits for just normal business activities. Things like hiring, training, product development, uh, even where you put your business will get you tax credits. So there's kind of two strategies. You can either get tax credits for the type of business you are and what you do on a daily basis, or you can buy tax credits. So there's a couple different options. Good. And I want to share some of those uh, in this show, what some of those specific tax savings can be and tax credits for, for your, if you run a business. But let's take the example that I'm just going to buy the tax credits. So, so you know, what are some of the discounts? What are some of the savings I might get from buying tax credits? Well, I think it, it depends on the type of credit because the one thing that you'll find is any kind of tax product comes with some level of risk. Now, it may be a very minor risk, uh, but there is typically risk involved. And like any investment you make, uh, there is risk and reward. Uh, and so when you look at the different programs, uh, a state-based tax, tax credit there are times where you can find those credits for as low as you know maybe 65 to 70 cents on the dollar. There are other credits that you'll find that trade closer to 90 cents on the dollar. Uh, some of the things that will determine what you know affects that pricing uh, could be are they guaranteed credits? Uh, let's go back to the film credit because we've spoken about that already. Uh, in some instances, the studio will actually guarantee the credit. So for any reason there's ever a problem with it, Warner Brothers says, "I'll make you whole." So if you buy my credit, I'll make you whole 
whole if there's ever a problem. So clearly, when you have the full faith and credit of an organization the size of Warner Brothers behind it, uh, the expectation is if anything ever went wrong, they would make you whole. On the other hand, you may be buying credits that are not guaranteed. Um, also, you know, the process by which they get created can have more risk involved with it. Uh, so you really have to look at the risk reward, and that can affect what you ultimately pay for those credits. Okay, so anywhere from sixty cents to ninety cents on the dollar. I think that's that's pretty accurate. So you're going to save anywhere from ten to forty percent on those tax credits. And it, and we're short on the break, but is there a dollar amount that? Well, we are on the break. So let me let me hold that question. I've got some more questions for these guys. We're going to have some great information for you today. So you want to stay tuned. We're going to have more on tax credits and more tax incentives. And before we go, when Warner Brothers um, guarantees my purchase of tax credits i want my guarantee to be a star in a movie how's that <laughs> michael you have a face for radio remember that <laughs> thank you very much you had to remind me of that and we're also on video well stay tuned more to come i'm michael bull this is the commercial real estate show we'll be right back the commercial real estate show is brought to you in part by your friends at bull realty when your business requires proven performance visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408- Bull. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate related topics, check out our on demand show podcast. Some available topics include social media for business, loan workout strategies, zoning for dollars. And here's one of my favorites. Oops, I should have covered that in the lease. (laughs) Okay. And uh, lease versus purchase announced at this point in the cycle. Basically, if I think it's interesting, we've covered it. You can access the shows anytime on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Just visit iTunes or the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're talking tax credits and tax incentives at a very good time to be doing so. We're talking with Ricky Novak and David McMillan. And guys, before the break, we talked about buying tax credits at what area what price range of the of your tax liability should a taxpayer consider buying tax credits i mean if you only owe fifty thousand dollars or you know should you owe five hundred thousand dollars before or one hundred and fifty thousand before you start considering buying tax credits I think my answer really comes down to, uh, are you going to buy those credits or do you have to manufacture them? Um, Because a lot of times, if you're going to look at what you're doing as a business and you've got the capability of maybe manufacturing those benefits internally and then self-consume them, there's usually a cost associated with going through that process. So, you know, I think we have to look at, you know, are you just looking to purchase or are you going to try to create them? If you're going to purchase them, then my answer really comes down to, you know, assuming that you can find someone that will sell them in increments as low as $20,000, then usually the response is buy them. Um, What I find for, for my clients is depending on the type of incentive and depending on who the seller is, they usually have kind of break points on what they're willing to sell, you know, as an example. Example, you, you may have on a film production, you may have a big studio that says the minimum investment is $100,000. However, you may look at credits being sold from conservation uh, where the owner may be willing to sell in increments as low as $20,000. Uh, if they're available, they're a form of tax savings for you. So regardless of what your liability is, I'd say you, know, you should take a look at them if it's something that interests you. Well, that makes sense. And, and David, if you're, you're a business and you can manufacture these, these tax incentives inside uh, your business, uh, at what level should you do that? And then, at, and, and maybe that's any level. I think, but <laughs> every level. Every if level. you don't want to pay taxes, <laughs> you should get tax credits. Okay. And tell us about some of the tax credits for, for businesses. Yeah, it really just depends on what industry you're in. And then what are your normal things that you do every day as a business? Mm-hmm. Example, here in Georgia, if you learn software technology, you get a tax credit of up to $1,250 for doing that. Um, if you're a manufacturer and you're developing new products or buying equipment, there's a tax credit for doing that. Uh, Another hot topic around here in Atlanta is uh, location tax credits. And actually, these are credits that every company all over the country should look at. Basically, where's your business, where are your employees located, and you get a tax credit for doing that. So really, at any level, companies should look at what can I earn? You know, what are the normal business activities that'll create tax credit opportunities? And then if I have extra tax liability, let me buy some credits too. I don't think anybody wants to pay more taxes than they should. So I think it's a matter of who can help you 
get those tax credits into your pocket. Okay, that makes sense. And let's look at a couple of those tax credits uh, a little closer. So Obamacare, we've got more health care costs for companies. Are there some tax incentives there? There are there is one tax incentive uh, called health care tax credit. Now I've heard a lot of business owners mention this that yeah there's a great incentive for me health care costs are going up but the reality is this is not going to be surprising to anybody that's dealt with the government before most businesses actually don't qualify for this tax credit. You have to be less than 25 employees and your average salary has to be less than fifty thousand dollars. So if you're in a metro area this is usually pretty hard. Just based on average income and average salary. So there is an incentive, um, but most of the time it's gonna be for small businesses, you know, 10, 15 employees, um, maybe outside of the metro area. So while there is an incentive, it's not very good, but that's the government for you. Okay, and how about hiring incentives of creating new jobs? There's lots of those incentives. On the federal level, uh, in January, Ricky mentioned this with the new tax bill. They actually also extended a hiring tax credit where if you're hiring veterans, you can get up to $9,600 for doing that. If you're hiring people in government assistance programs, you get a tax credit for doing that. And then on the local level, most states usually have a job growth plan or a job growth tax incentive for creating new jobs. And Georgia has seven different types of job creation tax credits. But every state has these. So you're creating new jobs you want to look at okay there's usually an incentive here for me no matter where I am okay and what are some of the options for uh, people running businesses to, to learn more about these I mean uh, you're a consultant you help companies uh, and I guess there's they could reach out to you reach out to people like you around the country and there are, are also there's some uh, websites and things you could recommend for to learn more yeah if you're a business in Georgia georgia.org is a great and great site to learn about all the different options that Georgia has however and Ricky knows this uh, getting the tax credits and doing all the paperwork is really what makes the difference I had a client out in California that I went and visited a couple weeks ago and I literally took from Atlanta to California 10 inches worth of paperwork for one program. So you can go to georgia.org. Um, if you visit your state's um, Department of Revenue or Taxation website, you'll find a list of those credits and then with the federal government, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I think David makes a good point. You know, in some instances, whether it's a state or federal benefit, in some instances, the paperwork and the process is fairly limited and easy to follow. But that is typically not the case. What you find is uh, while the incentive has been created, whoever created it makes it overly cumbersome to be able to access that benefit. And that's why ultimately it's important that taxpayers work with experts to make sure they get mm -hmm. the process right. For certain incentive programs, you get one shot. And if you apply, and you get it wrong, then you're out of luck. And so it's very important to get it right the first time. Right, right. Good points. Well, let's talk about energy tax credits. Uh, what's available out there? Going to put a solar panel on my roof and get a tax credit? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the areas that the federal government as well as state governments have been very focused on have been uh, really pushing renewable energy uh, as, a, as a resource. And so there have been phenomenal federal and state-based programs, uh, many of which will sunset either the end of this year or the end of next year. So it's important that you pay attention to how long that window of opportunity could remain open. Um, often these programs do get extended uh, but they typically have finite lives uh, you know but you you talk about you know what are some of the areas uh, the, the you know wind solar hydro have always been some great programs so within commercial real estate especially where we see these benefits make sense uh, there are a lot of owners of very large warehouse industrial properties very large retail properties uh, where they have a, a lot of horizontal square footage on the roofs of buildings where they can go in and put solar on the top of the roof. When they do that, they receive a, a great incentive at the federal level and often at the state level for having put that solar on the roof. And at the same time, they've created a benefit for their tenant because by using solar, they're typically driving down the cam charges. Uh, so there's a great way uh, for, for real estate owners to access those benefits, but it trickles all the way down to individuals. You put solar on your roof, you're entitled to a credit. So so it's important to look at you know both the business side again and the personal side what may be out there and then finally there are some smaller programs where if you upgrade you know the types of windows that you have on your building if you add you know better hot water heaters or more efficient toilets and things of that nature you also will will um, qualify for those credits okay so if, if I'm laying out in the sun and I put those aluminum full things around my face to reflect the sun as I get a tax credit for that <laughs> yeah, unfortunately no Michael but uh, you know what we can work on that for you 
you. Dave and I will uh, go and lobby the government for that. Okay. All right. Well, there are a lot more tax incentives and tax credits available for you, and we're going to get in more into that in the next segment. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by France Media. France Media provides exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit francemediainc.com or call 404-832-8262. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. You may be listening to the show anywhere from Atlanta to Dallas today. The show's been broadcast around the world for close to three years on iTunes and multiple websites, and it's aired on 12 stations across the country. We'd like to say hello to our listeners in Houston on Business 1110 KTEK. Today, our show is called Tax Credits. We're talking with Ricky Novak and David McMillan both tax experts related to business and real estate. And and gentlemen, conservation easements have been something that uh, a lot of landowners have, have turned to today. Tell us what, uh, what what is a conservation easement and how might someone use that? It's a great question, Michael. Um, conservation easements, uh, essentially what happens is the, the federal government allows you to conserve land in perpetuity, which means forever. Uh, and in return for doing that, you receive tax benefits, and those tax benefits are at the federal level a tax deduction. Uh, So when you look at conservation, uh, you know, you can use it in many different instances, uh, whether you happen to have a a thousand acre family ranch out in Montana, and you decide to conserve the property, what you're doing is you're simply giving away the right to develop that property later on. So you're going to preserve it in the state that it is forever. Uh, A little bit closer to home in the, the commercial real estate world, you know, if you're planning a very large mixed-use development, uh, typically there's a certain amount of green space that your municipality is going to require of you. If you go above and beyond, let's say you have a thousand acre mixed-use development and you plan uh, to put 30 acres of green space in, if you put in an additional 20 acres of green space and you conserve it, you use it as, as, as parks and whatnot, you'd be entitled to that development. So it's a great thing to, to put into the projects. And we all know that today's generation is looking at, at green as being very important now. Are these tax credits or write-offs? Well, that's an important question. Um, at the federal level, it's a tax deduction. So when you conserve property and you put this easement on it, you're gonna you're making a donation of that easement to a qualified organization, which is typically a land trust. So when you make that donation, you're going to be entitled to the federal tax deduction. It's a non-cash charitable contribution. But then at the state level, certain states, and, and as examples, uh, Virginia, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, there are some states, Colorado, that offer a fairly lucrative state tax credit in addition to that deduction benefit. So it's very state by state specific. Okay, so I could still use the land for recreational purposes. So if I wanted to uh, hunt deer or (laughs) I wanted to walk on it and then look at birds. Right. Absolutely. If you, you decide that you want to continue to use it passively, um, that, of course, is going to be negotiated in the conservation agreement. So when you make the donation to the land trust, the agreement will set forth forever and ever what you can and cannot do on that property. So if you want the right to hunt, uh, if you want the right to fish on the property, if you want to ride four-wheelers, horses, as long as it's passive recreational use, it's usually not a problem. What sometimes landowners will do, though, is, you know, let's go back to the example of, let's say, that, that our, our owner has a thousand acres in Montana, they may decide that eventually they may want to build a couple of additional houses beyond the, the one family compound site that currently exists. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll maybe identify two or three home sites uh, that they don't want to conserve, and they'll just make sure that the easement language states that that part of the property is being held out of the easement. So uh, it's very important with conservation that you, you understand that what you do today is going to be in place forever and so you've got you've got one shot to get it right 
Okay. And the amount of the conservation easement, is it determined by the difference in the value of the property if you were going to develop it and now the reduced value of the property because you can't develop it? Is, is that the matrix? Right. So so what you look at is you, you have a conservation certified appraiser that comes in to value the property and he's going to determine what is it worth before the easement is put in place and what will it be worth after the easement's in place. Mm-hmm. So the difference between the two is what generates that non-cash charitable contribution. Um, you know, so, so those benefits can be substantial. At the federal level, a taxpayer can offset 50% of their adjusted gross income in 2013 from conservation tax benefits. Um, Corporations can offset 10% of their federal taxable income. So it's a very, very powerful financial tool. Um, And you you can either conserve your own property that you own and generate these benefits for self-consumption, or you can look for other landowners that intend to engage in these conservation activities, become a partner in the partnership that owns the land before it gets conserved. Um, So there's ways to access it uh, even if you don't own property that you want to conserve yourself. Yeah, and that's interesting at this day and time when there's some outlying uh, land that uh, you know maybe has less value, but uh, so it's something certainly to look into. For more on tax credits and tax incentives, I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800 800- 408 Bull. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We have some great shows coming up for you, including next week a show with Ryan Severino with Reese, and we'll get their view on the commercial real estate market. The following week, we have a show on office tenant strategies. We'll have top tenant reps from Chicago, New York, and D.C. about office tenant strategies. You don't want to miss these shows. For And be sure to catch these shows. Don't miss a show of special interest. Sign up for a once-a-week email announcing the show topic at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're talking about tax credits and, and tax incentives with Ricky Novak and David McMillan. And gentlemen, I'd like to touch briefly on some of the various programs uh, that are available out there. Uh, David, you could start. What are, what are some some businesses should think about? Absolutely. Well, one great tax credit on the federal level is called the Research and Development Tax Credit. And really, the, the two main industries that we see this tax credit available to our software developers and manufacturers. Uh, Companies that are creating new products, improving new products, um, maybe even coming up with different materials to make those products. You know, everybody's going green nowadays, so a lot of companies are trying to come up with different chemicals or different ways to make products. And this tax credit will allow you to get a percentage of all your cost and energy into coming up with that new product, whether it's a new software, uh, upgrade, uh, everybody's going mobile, so companies that are creating mobile apps can even get this tax credit. So that's one big tax credit available to companies on the federal level. That sounds like a really big one. And Ricky, what about some uh, programs related to real estate? Well, we spoke earlier about conservation. Um, uh, kind of the, 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 the nephew of conservation is historic preservation. So a lot of times you'll have someone that will buy a historic building and plan to renovate. Uh, we see this very often in places like Chicago and New York where uh, you, you certainly have structures that, that are a lot older than other places in the country. Uh, if you uh, basically put a facade easement on a property, which would be you preserve uh, the face of the building and agree that you won't change it, you can qualify for federal and state tax incentives, uh, historic preservation also, which gets into the guts of the building and, uh, you know, in different parts of the country, uh, you have very strong tax incentives. We have a client that not too long ago uh, worked on a historic preservation project in Utah uh, where literally, uh, you know, they turned a very historic building into kind of a, a multi um, a multiple apartment complex uh, where they literally had to number all the tiles around the fireplace and put them back in the same position they were in mm-hmm. before they took them apart. But in doing that, they were granted some phenomenal phenomenal incentives by the state to preserve the historical integrity of that building. So really interesting. That's interesting. And, and you have to do be very careful with that, right? You have to plan that in advance and know that you're doing that before you start any type of, of demo and move forward with that, right? Absolutely. As, as I said earlier, when we talked about concept conservation, it's a forever thing. When you put that uh, facade easement, you know, there are two types. There are historic preservation credits where you are 
agree to preserve what is there. And then you have facade easements where you agree to never change it. Um, it's important when you remembered that you put an easement on a property, uh, like a facade easement, you're essentially protecting that forever. Uh, so you do have to do some good pre-planning. Uh, and then remember that whoever you put in charge of your ongoing maintenance and repair, uh, they have to be made aware of what you did so they don't accidentally do something that causes a problem. Yeah, good point. David, what's another program uh, business owners should think about? Uh, enterprise zones. This is actually a state tax credit that Florida has these programs. Texas, California, many states throughout the whole country have enterprise zones. And essentially, real high level, is that if your company lives in or is operating in one of these enterprise zones, and these are usually specific tracts of land, tracts of property that the state wants to develop, um, adding jobs. Um, and then if you have employees that either live in the same area or you cr you're creating new jobs, in this certain enterprise zone, you can get a tax credit of several thousand dollars for each job. Give you an example, uh, we've got many clients in California. And if you're in an enterprise zone in California, um, each new hire could bring up to $37,000 over a five-year period just for hiring somebody. So enterprise zones are a really great tax credit that if you're thinking about, especially if you're thinking about relocating your business or expanding and moving your operation, it's great to get connected with an expert on tax credits and these location credits and, and probably your real estate broker advisor too to figure out what area can I put my business in that'll generate these type of enterprise location tax credits. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and if you're a broker or an owner and you're marketing a property in an enterprise zone, you want to know about that and make sure you're making that a part Absolutely. of the marketing. And Ricky, there's some other uh, tax programs related to real estate, right? Sure. Uh, probably one of the programs that has been most widely recognized and used uh, has been the low income housing tax credit. Uh, this was a federal um, as well as a state incentive program uh, that really incentivized uh, apartment developers to build, uh, it, you know, apartment units where a good percentage of those units were being rented uh, by uh, people that qualified for affordable housing help. Uh, you know, as you know, the government uses these tax benefits to incentivize certain behaviors that otherwise would not potentially happen. And as you can imagine that, you know, developers might not want to build an apartment complex uh, where they had to have concern about the ability of the tenants to pay the rent every month. Uh, and so the government provided these phenomenal incentive programs. And, and again, there are federal and state incentives for a loan income housing, those have been widely recognized and used for, for decades. Uh, so, so definitely, if you're looking to build uh, either, uh, you know, those, those affordable housing units, um, you can mix in, uh, you know, market rate units as well. So it doesn't mean the whole complex is, is focused on affordable housing. Um, it's a percentage can be market rate. Uh, and you can even build a senior product uh, that will qualify for those benefits. Okay. And tell us real quickly, briefly, what are new markets tax credits? So uh, again, at the federal level, the, the federal government looked at certain areas that were blighted uh, and that were uh, sorely needing of, a, of an overhaul. Um, and most of the time, a developer isn't going to go and buy land in those types of areas to build because there's a reason that, that they've been blighted. You know, there have been um, either economic downturns or there have been a flight of industry out of the area or maybe the area has had some crime problems. And so the federal government created these new market tax credit programs uh, where uh, you could apply for them on an annual basis. And if you uh, actually receive an allocation, you receive tax incentives at the federal level in return for going and redeveloping these blighted areas. Okay, well, after a short break, we're going to tell you how to plan and how to get these rolling. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by France Media. France Media provides exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit francemediainc.com or call 404-832-8262. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. In case you're listening to the show on the radio or iTunes or the show website, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and uh, search for Commercial Real Estate Show. We have three sections there, one on available properties, one on market updates, and one on commercial real estate intel. You don't want to miss the videos there. Well, today our show is called Tax Credits. We're talking with 
Ricky Novak and David McMillan. And gentlemen, and David, if I start with you, how should a company start planning to take advantage of some of these incentives? I think there, there's two main things. One is to look at what tax credits are, are available to you. I think that's the biggest thing is, what can I get as a business? If I'm a manufacturer, I should be getting tax credits for hiring people or buying equipment or training. Um, and then the second thing is to start planning with what's going to happen the rest of this year. Um, how can you plan what tax credits you're going to earn? But then also talking with an expert or you're an advisor to think about well, what am I going to owe in taxes this year? You know, if I'm going to owe fifty thousand and I can eat up those fifty thousand with training credits, or if I'm going to owe a hundred thousand and I need some other options because I need to buy some tax credits, I think those are the two things: is what tax credits are available to you as a business, and making sure that you have an expert let you know all the incentives that are out there, and then kind of planning from a end of the year tax standpoint: what am I going to owe, and then how do I minimize what I'm going to owe for for the end of the year. Yeah, that makes good sense. Instead of complaining at the end of the year of what you owe, start thinking about it now as, as hard as that might be to want to think <laughs> about and start planning now. There's a lot of companies are, are doing better than they have in, in the past. And Absolutely. You want to do a little bit more planning. Well, Ricky, what about in uh, real estate? Well, again, you know, I, I have to echo what David said. You know, what do you own that you can actually manufacture your own benefits from? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a process there. It takes time. So it's not something you can typically decide to do come December <laughs> because usually you've missed the opportunity because the manufacturing process, so to speak, um, it, it typically involves other outside third-party professionals. Um, and it takes, you know, typically, you know, 60, 90, even 120 days to go through those processes depending on the type of benefit. So so I do think you have to get your arms around, you know, what do you own that you can can manufacture this year, and where should you start looking for just straight, you know, purchase opportunities mm -hmm. where you can buy uh, tax credits that someone else has manufactured but doesn't really need. Um, so, so definitely start those processes. Uh, the other thing to think about is, you know, we've we're obviously here on a commercial real estate program. Um, it's important to remember that if you have no income from real estate and you don't own any real estate and you randomly came across the station and you said, Michael. Bull's voice is awesome. I'm just going to listen. <laughs> um, then you can access these credits as well. So that's the great thing is if you have significant income, no matter how you're making it, where it's coming from, you can access these benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can buy those a lot faster than you can manufacture them, right? Absolutely. Well, we like to ask our guests for a closing tip for the show. What do you have for us, Dave? I'd say talk to an expert, figure out what's out there. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing is most companies have no clue about all the different opportunities that are out there. And it's really simple. Mm -hmm. Tax credits come from business activities. So go find what's out there and then plan from there. Yeah, that makes sense. You have to be aware, right? Know, what, know what's there. available to you. Ricky, how about a tip? Um, my tip is involve your tax professional in the process. Mm -hmm. um, your accountant is the one that has to sign your tax return. Uh, your accountant is typically a wealth of knowledge about different types of benefits that may make sense for you. Involve your involve your accountant because they're going to help work with you and help advise you along the process. And what we have found is when our clients' tax advisors get involved earlier in the process, it's a much smoother process. It's a much more efficient process. Um, um, so I'd recommend involving your accountant. Well, thanks for doing that. I'm speaking to a national group of CPAs <laughs> next month, and they'll be glad to hear Fun that. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Michael, thanks for having yeah, thank me. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, I have a question for you as a listener. Can you join us next week? Well, I hope so. We'll have uh, Ryan Severino on the show. He's senior economist with Reese. He'll join us in Studio One here and share his take and their market predictions on the commercial real estate market. So you don't want to miss that. That show will also be on YouTube and the Commercial Real Estate Show and all the radio stations. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Michael Bull. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh and join us for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by your friends at Bull Realty, France Media, Atlanta Office Liquidators, and Wiseman, Noack, Curry, and Wilco. For more information about these companies or to access additional show podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.